Oh no, I got a red shirt. I'm doomed. Hey, I'm gonna show you how I change strings on this Gibson J100, which I bought brand new in about 1995. And I've really worn it out a little bit. So these strings are okay, but I'm gonna just take them off. So if you know how to change strings, you might you don't have to watch, but if you wanna know how I do it, I just kinda take my time. I use my fingers to uh, remove unwind the string. I played quite a gig last night. Uh, I got alerted about 5.30 p.m. that I was needed to play at a casino in our area. And I said, I'm in. And so all I had to bring was my pedal board and a guitar and two cables. And uh, I brought a mask and an ID, my keys and my phone. And that's all I needed. Luckily, I, I had taken a shower and greased my hair into a uh, horrifying shape, so I was ready for to rock. Just had to put on some black pants and a black shirt, and black shoes, and I was. They picked me up, and we played uh, about eight thirty to twelve something, and there was or eight, to whatever. But there was a, a lady they wanted us to incorporate into this kind of show band I play with. So it was a new guy on bass that normally plays guitar. A drummer I played with twice, and the singer I played with twice, and a lady we've never played with before. We got, we just got rolling. She's like, you know this song? And I'm like, I just went, what? She goes, it goes like B to E. I'm like, B to E. She goes, you got it. One, two, ready, go. And it's like, some sort of a, like R and B tunes and stuff that, uh, I may have heard once. And. They're like perfect, you know, anyway. So just knowing your chords is really great. Basic chords and just have a little confidence and don't be afraid to try. So I'm just unwinding these and kind of pulling them this way. So that's why I'm a little, uh, you know, the next day after a gig, you wake up, you're just like, wow. I feel like you get hit by a truck. And this band, you know, when you play a casino gig, there's no beer or you can't gamble, you can't do nothing. So you, I just kind of sat on the stage, but just standing there for like four hours, being on your feet for like, you know, six hours or something. I did sit on the brakes, but basically, it felt like I got hit by a truck getting up this morning, which is part of getting older. So, hey, this is going pretty good. I'm just unwinding them. A lot of people use those string winders, but those can mar the finish on the side of the headstock. So I don't really use those. Um, this is fun anyway. But you can try. If you want to use a string winder, that's totally cool. So, coming right off. Here we go. Oh, one more time around. So I just like to unwind it completely, and then it pulls straight out of the hole, and you don't end up fighting with a knot. It's one thing I don't want to do is fight with a knotted string. All right, six strings off that way. Now I'm just going to pull these bridge pins out. These come right out with fingers, but you might want to have a little sort of pliers or something to pull them out if yours are stiff. Any little tool that you can yank them out. Now, make sure you don't lose these. I just lost one, two, three. I got all six. Okay, take these six strings out. This is going pretty good. Wind them up into a little ball. And then I'm going to uh, wrap them up like this. And then I, I save all my old strings. I'm going to recycle them some year. i got a giant bale of metal I'm going to recycle. should probably do that next year for sure. All right. Now... You know, if you just take care of it, you're not going to have a big mess. All right. Now, let's see if I got a little cloth. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. So, usually I'll put some uh, fingerboard oil on there, but this time I'm just going to wipe it down really quick. You know, if you get that crusty buildup, get some, get some fingerboard conditioning oil and rub it in, let it sit. You can kind of inspect your fingerboard at this time. 
I'm getting a lot of deep grooves into this fingerboard and the frets are wearing out. So a lot of deep grooves right down. Yeah, you can really feel it. So I almost need to have my fingerboard leveled or something, but someday I, I might do a major restoration on this guitar, but you know, when they say relic guitars, you know, I relic my own guitars. Well, this one literally got relic from playing it, but I'm not really against relic guitars if they're not ridiculous. So here I've got some Ernie Ball Earthwood extra light strings. This is 10 through 50. A 10 is kind of fun to play. It's, so I use a tool to crank that open. Throw away the package right away so I don't deal with a mess later. So I'm going to lay them out kind of in order. I might save these envelopes for when we have a band gig. I put each guy's cash in a little envelope. So here's the interesting part. This is the ball end of the string. And this is the pin. The pin has a slot in it. I'm going to line up the string with the slot and just stick it in the hole like this. We'll push it down. Good. That's the E. Here comes the A. Nice and organized. Again, the ball meets the pin. Just line it up with the slot. Shove it in there. How that holds, nobody really knows. It just does. It's a miracle. All right, here's the D string slot lining up with the ball and shove it in there. Repeat the G. Are we having ah? There, I see it. Are we having fun? I am having a ball. The G. So I do this for a lot of people, you know, people drop off the guitar and, uh, you know, if you're not used to doing this, it's pretty awkward and clumsy if you're not, you know, it'd be like me trying to do a brake job on a car. Oh no, there's last pin, the skinny string, a 10. These are pretty light for an acoustic, but I don't know. All right, now. Here's the six strings, all organized. <laughs> so when I put them in, oh, this one already got tied into a knot. That's a miracle. So when I, this is pretty simple. I just take the string, put it in the hole, run it up till I got about this much slack, or maybe a little less. I'm going to hold it with my right hand, the, the long part of the string. Kind of hold it so it doesn't, so it stays in order. And I'm just going to I'll fold this up and crank it up. And I'll probably, hopefully I get like maybe two windings on the string. I might have to hold the bridge pin down so it doesn't pop up like a, what do you call that? Whack-a-mole. It'll just start popping up. So, here it comes. It's pretty close. Oh, the A just jumped out. Pin. Got the pin. It's slightly awkward, you know. So again, stick that in. These pins are kind of bored out from years of... I play this guitar like every day for since 1995. Play it quite a bit. I record with it a lot in my studio. When I'm, I use it when I uh, record a song. I use this to lay down the first track. I'll sing and play with the click track, and then I know I've got the phrasing and the chord structure correct. And then I overdub like bass, or I double the acoustic part. And then I use that kind of guide track to, you know, put the rest of the parts together. But yeah, I record a ton with this thing. So here's the D string. I think it's the Hawkeyes uh, homecoming today, but 
I don't really follow my sports like I should. Like a real man. That's a disgrace. I'd rather restring a guitar. All right, so I'm gonna, again, I'm going to press down on the pin so it doesn't go flying. Hopefully, crank it up. It's a little too high. Oh, yeah, these are so loose. Oh, maybe I should buy new pins. But I kind of like the original. If I can keep it original, whatever. But a lot of these tuning pegs have broke off from this thing falling over. Whoa. Here's the G. So I just kind of hold it with my right hand, crank it up with the left hand, and then once it starts looking lined up good, put it in the uh, nut slot, go down here. Oops, I touched the um, peg so it doesn't come flying up like Whack-a-mole. Crank it up a little bit, extra high. All right, second string B is looking kind of weird. Let's line that up better. Okay. The B. <laughs> so yeah. I listed my Depinto for sale today on Reverb. I've been selling pretty good on Reverb. The bummer about that is there's quite a, uh, all the fees are just kind of miserable. So you have to list it a little higher than, you know, remember they're gonna subtract a bunch of fees. Uh oh, this one's getting a little crooked. Oh, no, it's okay. Sometimes it winds up kind of you know, you don't want a big knot up here. You don't want too much wrapped around the string post. So you have to kind of estimate. Yeah, it looks okay. You have to estimate how how much slack you have on your the, of the long piece of the string so that, you know, it doesn't end up. So yeah, we got two, two windings on the fat string, two windings on the A string, three windings on the D, Two windings on the G, and this is about two windings on the B, so I'm doing pretty good. Of course, these strings are gonna stretch and settle into, you know, where they're uh, attached to the guitar. This one's stretching. So it's, you know, you just have to crank it up. There, it's kinda, and when you get that pressure on it, it holds at the peg, at the bridge. So here's the first string again. It's kind of hard to see, but I just leave, you know, a good, a good bit of it um, slack, so there's extra to go around the post, post. Fascinating, I know. But hang in there, Just keep watching, I'll show you how I tune it. We'll test my ear. I'll show you a fun game to play. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to subscribe, that would help me a whole bunch. This channel, I'm not the best at, uh, you know, I don't understand analytics and demographics and. Is this spinning correctly? It feels like it's... I've got a whole bunch of extra tuning pegs, so if this one is blown out, I'll just switch it. Okay, it's holding. So for these strings, sometimes I'll just wind them. If I'm lazy, I'll just wind them into a little, uh, you know, I'll show you what I mean. Make a little, uh, what do you call it, coil. make a little circle out of each one if you want to that's one option or 
have your little snipper ready. And that one's kind of small for the big string, but ugh. this thing's about worn out. So don't cut them too short. Leave just a little tiny bit hanging off if you want, uh, just in case the string comes off, you gotta put it back on. All right, so I'll put those with the uh, that bale of string garbage, which I'll recycle the whole bit and perfect. So I'm gonna estimate. Let's see how close I was. That was pretty fast for, you know. Anyway, let's just see how close I was with tuning. Here I go. That's sharp. That's an F. Jimi Hendrix once said, only cowboys play in tune. It's getting there one more time. So the strings are going to slip out of tune. I'm just going to let it sit. And uh, next time I need it, I'll be tuning it a little more and it will kind of settle in after a while. But I'll be amazed at how nice new strings sound. All right, there you go. That's how I change strings on a Gibson J100 guitar. And again, if you could subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you dig the video. Comments are always welcome. And uh, I'm going to be doing uh, dropping beginner level videos on Tuesdays. I'm gonna actually try to organize my channel so you know like uh, chords beginning stuff on Tuesdays, maybe riffs on Wednesdays, chord tone soloing on Thursday, hot licks on Fridays, talking about guitars and stuff on Saturdays, and maybe a song on Sundays. We'll see. Organization for me is uh, a challenge but uh, I'm learning as we all are. Okay, I'll see you soon and thanks again. I'm Brooke Hoover and uh, keep rocking.